today. All right, and it's an email question. Ooh, I like those. Your email question, it says, Hey, James, just wondering if you think Sydney will finally die in Scream 6. Andrew, I got this email like three weeks ago, and I hadn't seen Scream 5 yet. So I finally saw Scream 5, so I'm like, let's talk about it. And I know you're a big Scream fan. I'm a big Scream fan. I won't tell you my opinions on Scream 5 so much. <laughs> but but they're making Scream 6. They're shooting in Montreal this summer. It's for a 2023 release. They're just, like, getting these things ready to go. I think they said initially that they had a plan for, like, a trilogy or something. That well, Wes Craven definitely did when he made 4. I think that might be the case with these ones as well. And for me, Andrew, when you're making a Scream movie, um, when you're making a Scream movie – you should plan sequels because you know if you've learned anything from franchises they always have sequels and the one thing i wasn't crazy about the halloween remake and i haven't seen halloween kills which i've heard very interesting things about i haven't seen that i wasn't a big fan of it but one thing that i appreciate about it was that they have a three-part story arc and they know where they're going with it and it's all planned out and because you need i think you need that and if it's going to be the ending of of yeah, character and franchises that you need to plan going forward with it. That being said, the Sydney Prescott getting killed. I, I, I have to say, I, I think I, I'm on the fence, Andrew, with the sixth one, because the directors come up and said that all bets are off. Now they've opened the floodgates have opened on the screen franchise going into six and they can, they feel like they can do whatever they want. And I guess we'll do spoilers for scream five. So if you haven't seen scream five, I'd probably stop listening right now. Yeah. That's a big but, deal here. <laughs> yeah. Because I think we're going to have to go into it. So Sydney, I mean, I, I think going into scream five, I knew she wasn't going to die on screen five. It's like, you can't get rid of her yet. I think six though. And if they do a seven, if it is a trilogy plan, if you go into set, then you can, the one issue is once they made her a parent, I find a lot of movies have like are scared to do that to those type of characters. Um, Gail Weathers needs to get stop getting shot in the side. Jeez. But I but the thing you know what was funny about Scream Five to me though, and Scream Two is like one of my favorite movies ever made. And Scream Five was more of Scream Two than Scream One, but it thought that it was more of Scream One then scream two it was confusing because i was like no you and they even make references to things that happen in scream two that they're claiming is in scream one and i'm like no you're getting your movies mixed up i think scream like <laughs> randy doesn't die until the second one and they're making it sound like he dies in the first one and maybe he dies in the first stab move. anyway the whole thing makes no sense but i think um i think you let sydney live through six and kill her in seven i mean at some point you got like nev campbell's got to stop coming back to these and, and uh, the other thing i will say andrew is i thought they did a really great job of bringing david arquette into this movie mm -hmm. how he got out of this movie not so much but how he got into this movie i thought i told you this early like the force awakens ghostbusters star trek all these movies where they try to the requels that they that they're talking about they did the best job of bringing the legacy characters back than any of those ones I just mentioned. Now, I think Han Solo might have been used, utilized the best. Um, but actually, both him and Dewey have terrible deaths. So I think, <laughs> but I think getting to the legacy characters, Scream 5, for me, crushed it. So I love this question because you're right. She can't last forever. Um, and this, you know, we don't know where this is going. We don't know if they have a plan to stop or if they're just kind of playing it by ear. You know, are they just going to see how well it does and then green light a part seven? We don't know if, like, if they have any kind of plan. Um, in my opinion, though, and you are fresh off the five boat, right? So you can tell me if I'm wrong or crazy. But after watching five... I feel like the most interesting thing you can do in six is have Gail be the killer. Oh, this question comes from Sarah, sorry, this question comes from Sarah Fawcett. Sorry, I couldn't find the email. I have to splice it in and editing. Sorry, Sarah Fawcett with the question. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. it, it might make sense. I, I think, though, Andrew, the killer should be the sister. So they should gotta, gotta just let that one go. Like just like you were all along. She was the one. G G See, she was she, the most sus character in that whole movie until she, she wasn't. You're right. 
Like she should have been. I think the the problem. You know what the problem with the Scream movies is now, and it started with Scream Two. This was the problem starting with Scream Two. The internet, because all of a sudden, mm. like with Scream Two, they had to change the killers part way through, and I think they actually can't change the killers for the better. But like they had to change the killers because the the script got leaked on the internet and Scream Two. That's in the nineties, man. Before the internet was like a thing, people were on the internet spoiling movies. And that and then Scream Three obviously had a lot of problems with Columbine and stuff like that, and then Scream Four had a lot of problems. But now they're like they're like we wrote seven hundred different endings, and then when you watch it, like what? Well, that's the one you went like I like the problem is they they the problem is you're trying so hard to to fool the audience and trick the audience and not let them al- follow you along like deceive them like oh no that's not the killer that's the killer that's the killer and the one thing Andrew that that these movies need to do if it is going to be Gale what they need to do to get to that again, in my opinion, as someone who just watched five is you've got to make the characters characters and I've got to be with them the whole time. And I've got to fall in love with them. And I want to be best friends and scream five started that way. I told you one of my favorite scenes was when they're all outside, all the suspects are outside hanging out at the table, just like in the first scream yeah. and live, live her alone. But that's what scream is. It's like, you get, I want like, bring me a part of this T of these of this friend group. When I'm in the friend group, then when they start dropping, I care. And then when the killers reveal, I'm like, you son of a gun. Like, I didn't want you to be the killer. Why would you do that? But this movie, it, it was focusing way too much on, on the sister in the hospital room. And then the, uh, the stuff all around it. And it, 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 I just think if it's going to be Gale, you've got to bring Gale back into the forefront of it, or the anyone that it is has to be in the forefront of it. And I've got to be along for the ride with them. And they, they kind of hit it. I do think that the boyfriend in Scream Five, I thought he was pretty good in it actually, and he kind of had it on that. But he was pretty obvious from the get go. When you look at a few things, he's the first one you see after the title screen. Billy Loomis, he got <laughs> slid in the hand, Jerry O'Connor. Connell. like there, and he appeared at, like out of the blue, Jerry O'Connell. Like there were little things in there that kind of like set him up to be it. And of course, he went to the basement. As soon as he went to the basement, I was like, "Well, it's definitely him." The guy wouldn't st- be alone, wouldn't be alone or anything. And now he's going into a basement. Are you stupid? So, <laughs> <laughs> but like, I think just Andrew, I just think when you're going to make someone the killer, not that this has anything to do with Sarah's question, but if you have, any, if you're going to make someone the killer, you got it. You gotta get me on board with them as a character and i've got to feel it because the problem with the amanda character in scream 5 is she's in it she's bitchy and then she's gone like she just leaves and for some reason the sister who i can't remember the character's name just left her only other inhaler at her friend like that made no sense to me it was like (laughs) don't force the plot as part six but i think you can kill sydney in six because killing dewey gave you permission to do that but when once you get rid of sydney andrew then you've got to figure out what this franchise is about that's right and i mean they're laying groundwork here for i I wish i could remember the sister's name but i can't i I, she wasn't the most interesting character to me billy's uh sam her the main character was sam Sam. this is why it's sam i read this i read this 20 years ago in an article andrew when when female characters are named Sam in movies, it it, it gives the uh, it's usually male writers that name them that because it makes you think that they're tough and gives them a backstory of, of like oh, wow. being yeah I read that I'm like oh like it's subconscious or something like that like they do that and it's it's <laughs> I laugh because I'm like yeah everyone is kind of yeah so that's wow, that's weird um yeah Sam, thank you Sam uh yeah I I wish her sister had been her the younger sister had been the main character instead because she was just more interesting um but it really feels like they're laying groundwork for Sam to be the new Sydney. Uh, like that was, they could not have made that more apparent, but see, that's the thing because this franchise really plays by its own rules so much. And it's always looking inward so much because the quote unquote par for the course, normal rules for a legacy sequel is to pass the torch I think it would be in Scream's best interests to deviate from that and not do that and keep this, keep Sid and have her do her thing and maybe have her doing something parallel to what Sam's doing because otherwise it's playing by the rules of Hollywood as opposed to pointing out the rules of Hollywood and kind of distancing itself from them, which is what these movies have been doing. So my vote is don't kill Sid. See, I found in this one they were playing by the rules instead of pointing them out. They were pointing them out a lot, mm-hmm. but they were, but they they were pointing them out 
and then they weren't doing what they should have done with the rules. They were making dumb choices and stuff. And that's what was kind of annoying me while watching it. Cause like, no, no. Like when, when Sydney says it's always about a dumb, a dumb girl going up the stairs instead of out the front door, then that happens moments later. There's a reason for that happening. Like they, they kind of show you like, Oh, the door's jammed shut. She has to go up. Like they justify things and they play into it. And also I think, the, the, my one thing with screen though is I really hope they do get back to the relationships of the characters more. Like I really, I like the twins. Like you really like the twins. I wanted to like the twins, but again, they just disappeared for half the movie. They, like yeah. I want them to stick around. Like Randy as I love Randy's my favorite. I was so happy when he died though in Scream Two because that's what these movies are about. Like I, as much as I didn't want him to die when he died, it's like yes, because now anyone can. Like the minute it's fair you game. kill off a main player, yeah, anyone can. And this one. Like when when the sheriff died, I thought, okay, well that's kind of you're. They were kind of forcing it a little bit too much, and then when her son died, I was like, but I haven't got to know him yet. Like I'm not that. Like I just found out that's his. That's her son. Like I I needed a little bit more on that for for me. I just thought they needed to give me more of those characters. I hope they get more to that, and they let the the commentary on the film commentary be kind of the underlying of it all. And the characters live in that world, not the world living with those characters, which is what I thought Scream 5 was too much of. So I, 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 I yeah, I, I mean, you, you can let Sydney live. I don't know if she should, maybe, she'll probably just end up being the killer at some point. I think though, once you've given her kids, the the ball game has changed a lot in that. I, You know what? I always thought a cool idea for Scream was if they did a new nightmare route with it. And they were like, they kind of played a new nightmare where it's happening to people. And then you have like, I always just have this image of it happening. Like, Scream happens. And while it's happening, like, there's like the Tonight Show's on. And Jamie Foxx is like, there's a movie! Stop doing it! Like, you could just like, Jamie Kennedy. I say Jamie Kennedy or Jamie Foxx? Anyway, I said said Fox. Yeah, well, Jamie Ken- Jamie Fox would be good too. Why not? But Jamie Kennedy yeah. would be on there going like, "I just watched Spider Man No Way Home." But Jamie Kennedy would be like, "It's a movie, stop it!" And then it'd be like, you know, red carpet, and Nev Campbell would just be like, "No, we made those movies for entertainment." I think that would be the next step of Scream for me is like take it uh-huh. out of the movie into so the real world. Do like a like a this is the end thing where they are just playing themselves, like Nev Campbell. Yeah, but they're Nev not. Campbell. Yeah, but they're not, unlike New Nightmare, they're not part of the movie. They're like right. in the background. They're like, stop it. These were movies. And it's happening to actual kids in that universe. That's kind of, I don't know. They're not going to go that route, obviously, because they've established, they've established good characters, just not, not like we just didn't get enough of those characters. And and I think the fact that the twins, like everybody survived, but um, uh, the blonde guy and his mom, like everybody kind of survived. So it, it leaves you enough room to, play with them in the sequel and i hope they do i hope i hope we get more of them um because yeah. also like th- like the the one thing too is is like randy's niece and nephew the niece knew all the movie rules but we never other than her being related to randy there was no real reason to know like she has that one moment about stab but we never get to know her enough like randy worked at the video store what do you do in 2021 2022 now like where do you work if you're into I movies know. right so th- i would like to see that kind of stuff played out because all of that made Scream that, like, as much as Scream Two is my favorite, Scream One is brilliant on how it handles everything and plays with everything. And but it, all those first two movies, even the third one, it keeps those characters front and center. It keeps the characters front and center, and the murders just happen. Like, there's a scene in this movie in the hospital where she's watching Dawson's Creek. Kevin Williamson created both because Scream was just Dawson's Creek with murders. Yeah, <laughs> and I want to get, exactly. I want to get back to that. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. And I want to, I, this is just me being selfish, but in the sixth one, I want more of the Stab franchise because I that is so entertaining every time they show, just uh, talk about it or just talk about how it was made and how many there are. Like, I can't get enough of that. Yeah. Give me more Stab. Yeah, no. Yeah, th- like, I, there were elements of this that I thought were fun. The Stab stuff has, ever since, uh, I guess, part one with the book, I like Stab has been such a big part of the Scream franchise. And I, I will say the opening scene in this one, I don't know about you. I got every question right. Every question right. I was like, <laughs> I'd be safe. I'd be safe. And and Aaron, my wife, was uh hated every second of watching this movie with me. Cause anytime there was a music cue or a callback, I was like, I was like the Leonardo DiCaprio meme. I'm like, oh like <laughs> I just I love Scream. Um, yeah, I was disappointed by this one, but whatever. I'm like, I'm gonna watch six. Don't get me like six, oh, I'm yeah. in the door. You know, all all in. Uh, I just hope they I just hope they focus on the on the characters a little bit more. All right, let's move on to our third and final topic today. 